Hi, this is David Harper of Bionic Turtle with an illustration of how to calculate skew and kurtosis, which are measures of normality, or we use them to see if a distribution is normally distributed. So to illustrate that, I've used Google's actual price data. So I pulled all of the daily price closes for Google for the calendar year 2007. So here's the last day, December 31st, 2007. Going back in time, there happens to be 251 trading days in 2007. So I've got the daily price closes here. And then I've got the daily periodic return. So these are the daily returns. They're continuously compounded because Google doesn't pay us dividend. I can get that by simply taking the natural log of the price close today divided by the previous day's close. So I take that ratio, take the natural log. That gives me the continuously compounded periodic return. So then I have a series, a historical series of periodic returns. In this case, for Google's calendar year 2007, so I have 251 of them. And that's the series I can ask about what's the distribution. And oftentimes I will assume it's a normal distribution, even when I know it's probably not normal. And to illustrate or to prove that, I plotted that here on this chart. The blue bars are the histogram or frequency plot of Google's actual returns in 2007. And the green line is the normal distribution with the same mean. And so we can see right away that the Google is typical in the sense that its actual returns don't really fit the normal distribution. And in two respects. First, notice there's some extra there's some extra values out here over to the left. Google's distribution, actual distribution appears to be skewed to the left or have negative skew. Also, observe Google has some some extreme daily losses that are greater than the normal distribution. So it looks like Google's date actual returns also exhibit fat tails. We have negative skew fat tails versus the normal distribution. Both both of those are somewhat typical of actual returns. So if I go back here to the plot or to the calculations to get skew and kurtosis all I need are four, data, four calculations. I need the number of observations. In this case, I have 251 daily returns. I need to calculate the average. So that's just an average function of all those daily returns. Happens to be a little above zero. And I'm going to take the standard deviation, both of a sample, that's here, and of the population, so that's STDEVP. And it's going to be pretty close. In the both cases, the standard deviation of this sample is 1.53%. So now what I wanted to show is that skew and kurtosis are naturally related to variance. We're more familiar with variance, but skew and kurtosis are just extensions of those in a way. And so if I look here, because in this chart, I'm using the same calculations for all three, variance, skew, and kurtosis. I'm only changing the moment. Variance is the second moment. Skew is a function of the third moment. And kurtosis is a function of the fourth moment. So it's the moments that change. Other than that, my calculations remain the same. If I skip to this row right here, I have the second moment, which is variance, and we're probably more familiar with. Then here I have the third moment, and that is the product of this cell and this cell. But up here in the formula, I just want to draw your attention to the formula for skew. Skew is this function here. It's the expected value of the cube deviation divided by the standard deviation cubed. So that looks like a lot, but it's just the expected value of the cube deviation standardized here, just like we standardized the variance into the standard deviation in order to understand it. Here we take the third moment, the numerator, and standardize it by dividing by 
the standard deviation cubed. And kurtosis is the fourth moment similarly standardized by dividing by the standard deviation raised to the fourth power. So again, skew is third moment divided by cube of the standard deviation. So if I come back down here to the third moment, what I've got here is the expected value of the cube deviation. So it's just the multiplication of the sum of my cubed deviations. So I'm just summing for each periodic return minus the average periodic return, then I cube that. If I come down here, here's that calculation. Third, for, for the most recent daily return, it's the periodic return minus the C6 is the average periodic return, and then I raise it to the third power or cube it. So here are the cubed deviations. I have one for each observation, so I have a series of 251 cubed deviations. I come back up here. Here's the summation of those. And then I need then I divide it by something very close to the number of observations with an adjustment for the small sample. I multiply those together to get my third moment because notice this formula up here is the expected value of the cube deviation. So it's very close to the sum of the cubed deviations divided by the number of observations. And so that's very close to what I have here. It's so small that it looks like zero, but these are small numbers. And now if I come down here to skew, we can see I've got a formula in here. I take that third moment, which again is this numerator, and divide it by the standard deviation right here raised to the third power. So that's this right here. All I'm doing is implementing this uh, proportion right here and I get the skew of negative, the parens are negative, 0.434 and then the kurtosis is very much the same thing. I've got a formula in here, uh, just a ratio where I take the fourth moment here, which is the numerator in this function, divided by the standard deviation raised to the fourth power. So that's right here. And I get a kurtosis of 4.626. Now no normal skew is zero, and zero indicates symmetry normal kurtosis is 3. So I have negative skew according to the numbers and I have a kurtosis greater than 3 or positive excess kurtosis which is exactly what I saw on my chart. Negative skew, positive or excess kurtosis. And then just to compare, check those, I ran the uh, Excel function, of course, I could have shortcutted all this manual calculation, just ran straightly the skew function off those periodic returns, and you'll notice it matches. And the kurtosis, well, I run the kurtosis, but then I just need to make two changes because Excel's function is technically a sample kurtosis, and furthermore, it's an excess sample kurtosis. So I have to add the three back and adjust for the fact that Excel is calculating a sample kurtosis. And I get back to 4.626, pretty close to the same. Okay, so that's an illustration of how manually I can get skew and kurtosis. This is David Harper, the Bonic Turtle. Thanks for your time.